that we call mechanical impedance or driving point impedance. The force it at x equals 0, in other words, the force in y direction in x equals 0 would be minus TL dy dx on x equals 0 because if you look at the string, okay, when it has a positive displacement, it looks like this. And if I, we cut some string over here at x equals 0, then we can see there is TL in this direction. Therefore, the force in y direction has to be minus TL dy dx. dy dx is the slope. Or you may think that, OK, I want to see the very small string element. And I want to find out that this force, the force acting in y direction, then this is a TL. Then this is the force minus a TL dy dx. That has to be equal to the inertia force uh, in these two directions. This case, this element should be uh, zero. Therefore, this one and this one has to be violated. Therefore, y is minus t or dy dx. There are two ways to think about the force in y direction. Okay, either way, I mean, if you are convenient to think this way, you take this way. And if you're convenient, to think the way that is described and the text to just to follow that way. Okay. So anyway, this is the force. Okay, because we do know the y, so we can write like this, because the y can be written like this, dy dx is simply what is it? minus j k y exponential j k x minus omega t, right? I am differentiating the displacement in y in x direction with respect to x. And I am evaluating that on x equals 0. That gives me minus j k y exponential minus j omega t. So I write over here minus jk that make this plus and the j and k y exponential minus j omega t. That's what I obtain over here. Oh yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Plus and minus is really a problem. OK, let's, let's try again, step by step. OK, the idea is, idea is we assume the possible wave over here. And that is y xt is g x minus cst, OK? And we are now trying to see the impedance over here, driving point impedance or mechanical impedance. That is simply the ratio of force acting at x equals 0 and the velocity at x equals 0, OK? so. Let's calculate the force at x equals 0. That is minus TL dy dx 
at x equals zero. just TL and uh, dy dx is jk y exponential jkx minus omega t that has to be evaluated at x equals zero right so we got minus and that is minus tl jk y exponential minus j omega t. Okay, so now we are happy. And the velocity at x equals zero, so by definition, the velocity is time rate of change of displacement with respect to time. So I can write this way, and this is because y has this form, I have now minus j omega y because I am differentiating this form with respect to time. I got minus j omega. And then I have exponential j kx minus omega t. That has to be evaluated at x equals 0. That gives me minus j omega y exponential minus j omega t. Therefore, the mechanical impedance or driving point impedance that was and is defined as the ratio between force acting in y direction at x equals 0 compared with the velocity in y direction at x equals 0 at any time Therefore, what we have is minus TL JK Y exponential minus J omega T. And I have minus J omega Y exponential minus J omega T. As you can see, uh, what we have TL K over Omega, that is very simple form. Okay. So that is the mechanical impedance that we have. Okay. Why we spend so much time to derive the uh, driving point impedance? Of course, to get the result. Okay, what we did is, first do we assume possible wave when we have endless string and we excite the string over here at x equals zero. And we attempted to observe the physics associated with this kind of wave by just looking at driving point impedance. And that is the ratio between force in y direction and the velocity in y direction. Okay. Using mathematical functional relation or concept, we found that the only possible way that can exist in this circumstance, the circumstances means I am oscillating the string at x equals 0 with y exponential j omega t. In other words, I am harmonically oscillate vibrate the string right, with the frequency of omega. Then the, all the possible, only possible wave would have this form. Then what I did is I calculate the force in y direction using this formula. And then velocity in y direction, again using this formula, and we get this result. So let me write down again. Okay.